Okay, I think that'll do us. I've always had a really strong inclination to want to paint sunlight or light in general because it could be a nocturne scene, it could be uh, an interior as well with very little light. And I think with a passage of time and understanding and practice, I think a few of the really big ones is to remember light to dark contrast because colour is fairly irrelevant in the light factor, I believe. It's all about the contrast and I believe light loves contrast. So with pencil drawing, monochromatic work, that is the surefire way to understand what you're doing and where you need to go and to learn the subtleties of how to portray light at its best. So let's see how I go. This is a fairly complex scene. So it's gonna take a little bit of drawing just to get the shapes uh, working for me, balanced. And I have to come clean with everyone I actually have had a go at this one before and kind of made a bit of a mess of it. Um, but instead of um, giving up and saying, oh geez, I'll never paint that, that only makes me more determined. That's where I think uh, how we philosophically look at our painting, because ultimately we learn more about ourselves than really we'll ever learn about painting. Uh, and with that, We'll learn our weaknesses, our strengths. Sometimes um, we'll attempt something and think, oh, geez, I didn't know I could paint hay bales as well as that, or um, where I struggle for some reason to paint umbrellas. So it is really learning how to get the best out of ourselves. But with this one, we're also making sure we get plenty of depth through our darks, but also our darks as dark as possible and try and think of in terms of, even though something might be in the distance, I still need it at a certain light to dark uh, point. And then when we come closer, that's when I need to almost go to 9.9, .9, not quite the absolute jet black. Uh, and I never use lamp black, ivory black, any of the blacks. I'll always mix my own, mostly through French ultramarine, uh, light red, cadmium red, to get those darkest darks, mainly because the premix blacks uh, are what's called a dead colour. And I, especially with landscapes, there's so much atmosphere. Uh, even if we had a black um, board or a, a something painted black, um, a black car, uh, if it's right in front of us, there's still going to be atmosphere, so it's not going to be pure black. Um, so I prefer to mix my own darks. And I think the one thing that I have noticed, and it was something, and it is something that I do by accident. I naturally put my values in much darker than I actually mean to. Uh, and with that, you're probably thinking, what do, what do I mean? And with that, uh, some artists will naturally paint quite warm. Some artists will actually naturally paint quite soft and almost pastely, uh, almost like it's a foggy day and they still get lovely depth and distance and their paintings are still strong. I, uh, I've noticed that I've naturally uh, put my darks and that's why I had to temper the, the, the most distant background, light to dark and how much contrast I do get in because it's very easy to overdo that one in particular and then you shut off the chances of getting that true uh, field of depth, the, the distance, uh, but also then I'll have shapes in that background, that little headland that I was working near just then. Um, so, and it was one thing that actually my father noticed many years ago and he says, whatever you do, don't change that. Don't try and tinker with that. Um, that uh, natural instinct to work with contrast and with colour. Even though I've mentioned that I feel contrast is the most, uh, the light to dark value is the most important part. Um, I really love to think that because that is really where the effect starts, the sunlight or light, I should say. I keep getting um, a little uh, generic with that term. Really does start with the ability of, of getting contrast. So I'm working with that even right up until now. It's probably not up, it's right up until 
I'm putting that foreground values in, that's when I start to think, okay, I've grayed things off in the distance. I've now got the mid distance working because our pigment does have a range as well. Uh, and if we have it pushed too hard to start with, we run out of our field of depth. So that's why I'm trying to push that distant one back, but then saving it for my lovely, juicy, warm, bright. And that's when I start to think, okay, uh, I can use a little bit of color, not so much to increase really light, even though light does maximize the color in a scene. Uh, you turn down, if you are able to turn down the light source on the sun, it will drop the vibrancy. So it is another way to uh, show contrast and show light, but definitely be thinking light to dark, light to dark. That truly is the, I think the gateway to most good, strong, powerful painting, but especially light effects. For me, it um, that's why it always comes back to my four step guide. Light to dark, cool to warm, shapes, edges. That's mostly what I'm thinking about when I'm mixing. And if I'm not getting it right on the palette, there's no magic that's gonna happen once I transfer it. That's why truly the hard work is done on the palette. That's why we need the patience to be able to uh, mix and put a little bit on and, and test it and think, oh geez, you know what, that's, that's uh, too dull or that's too warm or that's not quite the right local color or mother color for that area. And that's when the patience, but it's on the palette. Because once you've got that right mix, boy, that's the fun part is then ahead of us, the, the application, the putting of the paint, uh, spreading the paint, molding the paint, and also getting that, um, the final one for contrast is edge. See on that front little building, that vertical edge where the dark is up against the little bit of sand, little bit of grass. Just wrapping this one up now, Hopefully you got some really good hints and tips from this painting today. The important thing I believe with painting is to make sure we unify shapes. Even though we're pushing the light, we're trying to go from darkest to lightest to be able to create that contrast. Because even if it's a overcast scene, we're still trying to create contrast. We're really using our darks to our maximum effect. But with this one, with the trees and the buildings, I was able to tie all those shapes together that help helped me with uh, aiming to get that lovely darks on the trees. And then that really helped with the overall effect. I really love painting this scene. All the best, and I hope you enjoyed it.